Uh, a bunch of years ago, our youth group just kind of had a really, God gave our youth group this, this neat gift of kind of, I would say, exuberant worship, mm -hmm. where they just worshiped with abandon. The Holy Spirit really met our little youth group. And uh, they, they were going to summer camp all the time at Anvil Island, and they call their times together, they called it chapel. And so they were, they'd always come home after the summers frustrated that chapel could never happen in the city. And I remember telling them, I, God's the same you know, on that island as he is here in the city. And if you believe that, I'll, I'll even plan worship nights for you. We'll even call them chapel. And you know, I'll prove to you, or he'll prove to you, that uh, he's the same. You just... Just believe that he is and worship at the same event. Like it could, that could, that's a thing here. And so I held up my end of the bargain. I planned some worship nights and invited other youth groups because why not? It's a worship night. And they really held up their end of the bargain and they just engaged and worshiped. And it kind of became contagious and it grew into like a large worship night. And we started to rent out a high school and it just kind of mushroomed and kind of the, you know, sometimes these things happen where, uh, became the cool place to be for, you know, Christian young people. <laughs> it just kind of <laughs> happens sometimes, but I wound up scratching my head going, what are you really doing here, Lord? Like, it's, it's, it's nice to have a big worship night. I'm mm -hmm. grateful. But mm -hmm. What are you really doing? And what it turned into is a, a, a network of youth pastor relationships, I would say. And then I started having coffee with all these youth pastors that were just bringing their students to the fun, enjoyable worship night and started asking a question, hey, how's it going with having this be not an event like how do we how's it going with mission what's the uh, you know what the question i asked was what's the biggest problem facing you why aren't we growing mm -hmm. you know why aren't we growing and making disciples and the common denominator was we i have no idea how to mobilize our students in everyday mission i have no idea how to do that uh, I, I get how to plan a fun event that they can bring their friend to mm -hmm. but i have no idea how to mobilize them in everyday life i've got students that go to 20 different high schools like what am I, how am I supposed to create 20 different contexts for real world obedience for them? Mm. And I thought, yeah, I don't know either. And so then that just be kind of came this problem that we rallied around. And uh, it's still sort of the heartbeat of, we call it the 604 network now. It's just a network of youth pastors still trying to figure out that problem. I don't know if we have any great solutions, but it, it is still bugging us. Of going the, the idea that a seed could be planted in a student really early of going, I'm on mission here now, today, Monday morning, at the place I'm at. A very, that's a very important thing for them to know as early as possible. And uh, we just don't know, I don't know, how to, if someone has any, you know, someone has any ideas, they should, they should let us know on how to do this well. But we're still trying to figure out of going, how do, how do we create a system, a network, an awareness, uh, support, like enough pastoral care to even have that be a kind thing to say to a student? Like, how does that happen in everyday life for you? How do we equip you and then be there with you? And so the theory became, what if we started to have youth pastors oversee different high schools to band the Christians together to go, hey, you're actually not as alone as you think you are, and have a youth pastor adopt, foster, own a school that maybe doesn't benefit their youth ministry, whatever that means very much, but it but it is a missional idea of going, so very long story short, um, it just became neat to see different groups of Christians coming together on a high school campus to just go, what's God doing? And I had a, my, my high school was, was Point Grey. We just met at McDonald's at 7.30 a.m. every couple of weeks. And I just asked the question, what's God doing here? And what the students ended up doing, you know, was alphas. They would share their testimonies. They'd plan clubs. They'd do prayer things. So, just saying, yeah, it's actually really normal that you'd be on mission here. It's actually probably the most logical thing according mm -hmm. to what Jesus has done for you and what's in Scripture. It's very normal to be on mission here, even though it doesn't feel like it. I mean, really? <laughs> to what would happen as a result of just some you know, youth leader telling them that that's pretty normal. Uh, it's amazing what the Spirit does through that. Mm -hmm. So we're still trying to figure out how to have that be more and more the norm at youth ministry, like in an urban environment like Vancouver? How do we have more students looking at each other, maybe overseen by a youth pastor that maybe isn't necessarily their own youth pastor, but they're in relationship with other youth pastors, with their own youth pastor? Mm -hmm. Going, how do we obey Jesus here, now, today, in the world? Mm -hmm. um, that still is the heartbeat of the youth pastors network. And there's still big worship mm -hmm. nights, which are real fun, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. the heartbeat is really going, man, how do students catch a glimpse of what's possible in everyday life? So, Why do you think Mission Fest was a good place to introduce youth to missions? Yeah, great question. I think that 
there's something about the larger corporate nature of what's going on, like the unity that's experienced among the churches there that, that helps to highlight mission. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes when you talk about mission in, uh, in a local environment, it's, uh, it gets a daunting task, task mm -hmm. to present, mm -hmm. especially global mission. It just feels a little bit, sometimes it feels silly, especially in youth ministry when mm -hmm. a, a student's world is quite small mm -hmm. and uh, that's okay. It's growing. Mm -hmm. They're in high school. That's kind of an all-encompassing thing. But to be able to join um, with the rest of the body of Christ on, for the purposes of talking about what everyday mission looks like, it's really helpful for students. So going, oh, mission starts now. It's not something that, like, maybe I'll be a missionary one day. Mm -hmm. Like, certainly that could be possible. But that seed actually gets planted now, mm -hmm. and uh, it'll flower into all sorts of things. Um, could be overseas missions, could be marketplace missions, could be something that God's called them to do right now in their mm -hmm. high school which is something that I've become really passionate about, of seeing that spark awaken immediately in terms of everyday obedience. Um, I love when I, see, when I see that happen. Describe what that's like for you as a youth pastor. Yeah, well, I'm not a youth pastor anymore, unfortunately, but uh, I, it, there was, uh, when I was doing youth ministry, I remember very distinctly the students who engaged in everyday obedience developed a hunger for the gospel that made my job easier. <laughs> it's kind of one way to put it. Of going, It's tough as a youth pastor to generate both the supply and the demand. It's mm -hmm. like, uh, okay, here, I got all this information, but do you even want slash need this? Mm -hmm. And so building in to um, a youth ministry, the need for Holy Spirit empowerment, the need for the gospel to actually be something powerful that's required in everyday life has a lot to do with framing faith in, uh, in this forward motion of going, we're participating in God's kingdom. And so if a student is obeying Jesus in everyday life, participating in God's kingdom, all of a sudden the questions they're coming back with, uh, they ha there's, a, there's a need, there's a demand for truth because it's like, ah, oh, God's called me here, put me here. And I was like, well, now I'm a fish out of water. And now I need him. And now a job as a youth pastor, a youth leader, or really anyone building into young people is going, well, do I have a solution for you? It's called, you know, I don't know, scripture, truth, the Holy Spirit. And it's really fun to be able to, to supply something that's needed in a student. Mm -hmm. So I've just been thinking, how do you, in a ministry, build into it um, a call that then creates a demand for the truth that's just so enjoyable to present and walk students through. So I really believe in everyday obedience being part of the call, not to the exclusion mm -hmm. of truth, but to make it all the more needed and necessary and that they're hungry for it. Yeah. What is your fondest memory of Mission Stop? Yeah, I got to be part of helping out with those youth rallies. I remember talking with... Uh, friend of mine, Colin, Colin Yen, who led worship there for many of those years. And he came up to me and said, he's like, you know what, I feel like we just need to do an acoustic set this year. And I'm like, oh, that's an interesting idea. I mean, there's 2,000 kids hoping to come and jump up and down to their favorite, you know, <laughs> songs. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think enjoying ourselves that night is, is a big deal, you know. <laughs> um, but, uh, but he just really felt strongly that, the, that we needed to really put Jesus on the throne that day mm -hmm. in a way that stripped a lot of stuff back. Mm -hmm. And that's not every time, but you just really felt that that, I mean, how if we do that every time? But the way in which we were supposed to do that this time really felt as though kind of pulling back some of the, the showiness of it all. Mm -hmm. it's like, and there's a, there's a risk to that, but there's also something really to be gained if that's what God's doing. Mm -hmm. And so I, I agreed. I was like, yeah, let's, let's try that. And uh, so I was calling up there with his acoustic guitar and a couple other singers and you know, the first song was people are just like, okay, fine, seriously. Like you could feel the energy not be super high. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is a risk. But after the message, I mean, the spirit just had his way. And I think that especially the response of set that night was just so, it was so evident that Jesus was the hero of that moment mm -hmm. of like, we're about your kingdom. We're not here for anything else but you and what you're up to. Mm -hmm. And that was a sweet moment. And I think Missions Fest is continually, uh, I, I credit 
I credit the mission space leadership for even letting us do that mm -hmm. because you know there's 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 mm -hmm. some tickets to sell and some mm -hmm. bills to pay like mm -hmm. are people going to come if it's not you know like I get that there's yeah. a tension there it's got to be hot it's got to be hot yeah <laughs> so so but but they trusted us mm -hmm. as these young leaders who they've given the keys to the youth rally to which mm -hmm. is always just like wow really that's so amazing and then we make this weird decision of going what if we just pulled it all back but I think God uh, honored that and Jesus was really enthroned that night and um, the worship was sweet and I, I'll, I'll never forget the sweetness of that I'm just going there is nothing here but there's nothing happening right now except worship like that's cool mm -hmm. and could you imagine if if the idea of I'm here because Jesus has placed me here was placed inside the heart of a 13 year old mm -hmm. It might not look all that flashy even while they're in high school, mm -hmm. but that seed will grow. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's what I'm really hoping to see happen. Mm -hmm.